All right. So uh, let's uh, let's sorry for being a little late, but let's get things started tonight. So uh, let's call the meeting to order Woodstock Zoning Board of Appeals, September 23rd, 7 p.m. My name's uh, Michael Castiglione. I'm looking at Jude. Who else do we have here? Jude Salato. Hi, Jude. I'm Marsha. And me? Joe Bellick. Joe. Oh, Joe. Oh, I, okay. Hello. All right, Joe. I see uh, Andrew. Hi, everyone. <laughs> That's the applicant. I'm the Hi, Andrew. Okay. There's Joe. And who else? Robert, who's a, yeah, I'm a neighbor. neighbor. And I don't know who Jane D is. I don't know how you got the Zoom link. Um, I'm a friend of Robert. Okay. Okay, great. <clears throat> All right. So then uh, what'll, what'll happen, um, Andrew, is we'll, we have a little bit of meeting uh, materials to do before we get to your case. Uh, let's take care of that now. Um, so, um, based on that, it's determined that we have a quorum. I wanted to ask whether or not anyone had any changes or additions to the meeting agenda for the last meeting that we had on the 9th. No. All right. So then I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. And then the meeting minutes are approved. Uh, tonight we have one public hearing scheduled. It's the application of Andrew and Summer Bromwell for property located at 12 Sled Hill Road um, for a variance from the zoning law, of the town of the Woodstock for accessory structures and features and yards in order to legalize a previously installed hot tub in the front yard. Okay, so uh, Andrew, do you, uh, can you tell us about uh, your hot tub? Absolutely, yes, sir. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew, the uh, offending homeowner here. Very nice to meet you all, at least virtually. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking you for hearing our case, listening to our little dilemma with an open mind. Um, when my wife, Summer, and I first came to Woodstock on vacation about 10 years ago, we absolutely fell in love with this town. We had tickets to a concert at LeVon's Barn. We stayed at a vacation rental house. This was well before Airbnb existed. And the house had a hot tub. Everything about the trip was magical. And from then on, we always dreamed about having our own vacation house with a hot tub here in Woodstock. And we started saving up to be able to do that one day. Well, after several tries at buying other houses and losing out to higher bidders, we finally got a chance to make that dream come true in 2019 when we bought our little house on Sled Hill. <clears throat> On a side note, we've probably spent more money on Airbnbs here in Woodstock than anyone on earth. Between all the times we came up to look at houses and then during the construction <laughs> phase, we couldn't actually stay in our house. But that was actually a blessing in disguise because it really allowed us to get to know the town and make a bunch of great friends. When, we, when it was finally time to move here, we already felt like semi-locals. But anyway, right after we closed on the house, we started a year and a half long renovation project to make it into exactly what we wanted, which of course included adding a hot tub. I hope it's okay if I share my screen to show everyone a few pictures. Uh, okay. Since Summer and I are both still working from home, as soon as the house was ready and livable, we gave up our apartment in the city and moved to Woodstock full time. All that is to say that we've been very patient and we've invested what feels like a small fortune um, renovating the house and but you know we really love it here and we're finally able to enjoy it full time and we couldn't be happier it really does feel like a dream come true this is uh, my mom and summer during the construction phase this is what uh, the bedroom used to look like and current state um, and of course, one of the first things we did was buy a hot tub to make the dream complete. Uh, we are first time home buyers. We lived in the same apartment in New York City for 12 years. And so we had absolutely no idea what we were doing. And up to that point, our contractor had been handling everything for us. When we started looking into buying a hot tub, we asked our contractor to help us get the yard set up for it. And we asked him if we needed a permit. 
He laughed and said, you need a permit for everything in Woodstock. We laughed too and assumed this meant he would get the permit for us, just like he got the permit for the home renovations he was doing. After that, we thought we were good to go and bought a hot tub. Knowing that everything was on back order and it would take several months before it actually got delivered, this would give us time to decide where to put it and everything. At this time, we were still living in the city while our house was under construction, and we only occasionally came up to Woodstock to check on the progress of the house. Well, long story short, our contractor abandoned us for bigger and more lucrative jobs, and a couple of months went by where we couldn't get a straight answer on anything out of them, and eventually he just stopped responding to our calls and emails. Of course, this is going on right around the time we heard from Namco Pools that our hot tub would be ready to be delivered in a matter of weeks, not months. So we're in freakout mode because we've already paid almost $10,000 for this hot tub and it's ready to be delivered, but we don't have anywhere to put it. We called around in desperation and found someone over in Red Hook who agreed to install a nice bluestone slab for us on short notice. And he came to talk about different options for where we could place it. The two main options we saw were either the back side of the house bordering on the neighbor's yard or where it is now. And ultimately we decided <coughs> less obtrusive to our neighbor, Steve, who lived there at the time if we installed it in the front yard, right outside the new master bedroom we were building, but on the back side of the house, which would just be a lot closer to Steve's house. That was option one. We we're also worried about subjecting Steve to extra noise because our other, our other neighbor, Dave, just installed a hot tub at his Airbnb property, which Steve wasn't very happy about, and we wanted to be sure we were being good neighbors to everyone on our block. Our plan was to have the Red Hook contractor install the bluestone platform patio and build some nice privacy fencing or put big plants around the whole patio area and hot tub to shield it from view. We also hired him to do our, our landscaping, so we installed a bunch of nice new plants and trees around the hot tub patio. At this point, I know you're all thinking, these are either the dumbest city kids ever or someone who thinks they can just do whatever they want. I can assure you it's the former. I'll raise my hand and plead stupidity, like total and complete ignorance of how things are supposed to work. The only thing I can say on our behalf is, at this point is that our other neighbor's yard directly across the street, which is also on the same street corner of Pine Grove and Sled Hill across from the CBS, they basically have an impenetrable forest around their property that provides complete privacy. We don't like to look at that setup, and we didn't want to. We didn't plan to replicate that in our yard. But I hope you can at least understand why we thought it might be okay to have a hot tub that was shielded from view by nice hedges or fencing or something that's you know directly across from this on the same street corner. Uh, needless to say, we're complete idiots, not knowing the rules and thinking that all this is somehow magically okay to proceed with. I will say that the Red Hook guy seems very honest and competent, and we assumed he wouldn't do anything illegal, like install a hot tub in our front yard. But of course he doesn't know the rules and he didn't bother to look them up or ask. He just wanted his money for the job so he could move on to the next one. We ne he never did install the fence, but at, at least we had our hot tubs. We were happy and we thought everything was going great. This all happened around September last year. So we're right having the other day. And it wasn't until a few months later after we hired a new contractor to finish um, the half completed renovation project on the inside of the house, the new contractor agreed to put a privacy fence around the hot tub. that we actually realized we had an illegal pool in our front yard. Ellen came by one day and explained it all to us, which was quite an eye-opener to say the least. One last point worth noting is that as soon as Ellen told us it was legal to have a hot tub in our front yard, and it's also illegal to build a privacy fence that you know, put huge plants given that we're on a corner, we did look into potentially moving it to another location on our property. If you've had a chance to drive by, you'll of course know that it's a tiny house, it's actually less square footage than our little apartment in the city was, and the entire lot is about the size of a postage stamp. Uh, so once we installed, you know, a fence around our back deck, we figured we could, you know, have an option to move it onto that deck. But the deck is actually directly over our septic tank, and apparently it's a real hazard to have anything heavy, particularly like a hot tub, over a septic tank. And the other place we originally thought of installing it back closer to your neighbor's house also doesn't work because we installed a new propane heating system there, and you can't have a hot tub within so many feet of that. And as you saw in the picture, it's really only just a few feet of space between us and the neighbor's property. So that's not an option to move it further away from the propane tank. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but Ellen actually told us she would let the hot tub slide as long as none of our neighbors complained too loud. But we really didn't want to do the right thing and you know not have this hanging over our heads forever. You know, the house isn't perfect. I mean, we're staring right at the CBS dumpsters from our bedroom window, and every week it seems like there's a new emergency, like a leaky roof or a broken garage door. But we love it here even more now that we are full-time Woodstockers. We've got a great crew of friends in town who have been here a lot longer than us, are constantly introducing us to more locals who have become friends. 
despite all the headaches and massive cost overruns with our construction project, we still feel like we made the right decision and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. We just wish we could do it over and knowing what we know now, we could do it all above board the first time around. So thank you again for letting me explain how we got to this point. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Andrew, can you put the photo of the hot tub in the patio you built back on? So those posts that you have there, that is what you, where you were going to put a privacy fence. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's where Ronnie started to put a, a privacy fence. Yeah. By the way, the, the renovations you did on the house are beautiful. Thank you very much. It's like night and day from what it was. I wish I could say it's done, but I don't think it's ever going to be done. Done. Can yeah, you my... um, end the screen share so we can see everyone again? Thank you. You answered my question <laughs> because one of my first question was why couldn't you put it on the deck, which is very private. So you answered that. So. Things I wish we knew ahead of time. Isn't the town, aren't you on town sewer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't understand then how that works. I don't either. That's just something I read. <laughs> we had a, we brought an electrician out to like look at different options, and that's one of the things he said, along with the you know backyard by the propane tank. I, I don't. Does anybody know how the sewer works? I don't. I mean, because I know I live. I don't live in the town, and I have to have a septic system. But my understanding is, in the town, you're on the town sewer system. It. it, it we definitely have a septic tank out of the back though. Yeah, but sure. is it is it you being used or is it just an old septic tank that was there before you went on city sewer or town sewer? Yeah, I'm sorry, you have to ask a, uh, a water engineer question. Like it's that. really hard to hear you, Andrew. Sorry, it, thanks, Robert. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. It's, I don't know how the town sewer works. I know in the town there's an there's an on-site system and then there's the, the regular system. So that would be a question for I don't know. <laughs> I would think yeah, it I would find be that out because we do the water billing in the office, so I could find that out for you tomorrow whether or not he's he has an on-site or is it um yeah, could you take a look into that? Because I mean, and I think someone's hitting the nail on the head is that before the town sewer service, this property probably had a septic tank and a drain field. And that may not be being utilized right now. So I'm, I'm, that's something to look into. Andrew, are you the one who pays your bills? Like, do you physically see the bill? Yes. On your bill, do you get charged for water and sewer? Have you ever noticed that? I think so, but I would have to double check. Okay, I'll check that uh, for everybody tomorrow because we do the billing from our office. I would imagine being right by CVS, that whole area has to be town, part of the town system and also- I, I'm pretty sure it's town. I'm pretty sure it's town because I know my mom is on Country Club Lane and she has an on-site. Yeah. Because of where they're located, but I know that most of the ones in the central town everybody like on tinker street or mail all of those yeah. are town sewer. Right. Yep. yeah i'm directly next door and i'm 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 town. i would okay. think that it would right. be in the deed if if the town was actually servicing the septic that would have been probably in the deed when you bought the house no i i remember something that like you have to i don't know leave access to it okay is there any other questions for andrew from the board Nope, everybody's saying no. Okay, good, good. All right, with um, that, I would like to open the public hearing for ZBA case 2121, 
Um, I've noted that we have some emails and uh, a list of contiguous neighbors. Um, Michelle, could you help me out with that? I don't know that I have that in my file here. Um, or it's in the application. It's in the application, but I can read them. I've got them right here. William Leonard. Uh, okay, great. Red Hill Road. Yep. Uh, Robert Rabinovitz. I'm sorry if I... Okay. And your last name. Do you want to? Sorry. You're freezing up, Michelle. Would you like to say anything at this point? No, I can wait till after you read some stuff. Whatever you have to do. All right. So we have Robert. You're in the audience. Yes. Okay. Uh, Judith Steinfeld. Uh, H and HKL Properties, Michael Cozzulo and Dane Campbell and Carol Anderson. So uh, for contiguous neighbors that are present, it's hard for me to see who's here, but I do know Robert did say he was here. Uh, Robert, do you have any uh, questions that you would like to direct to the board? Well, I thought I would wait till after you um, had to do what you had to do with reading anyone else's comments. You, you're talking about email correspondence. We don't usually read those at the meeting. We, we all read them. We get them in our email. So we just okay. usually address the people who are at the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, thanks everybody for being here. And uh, I've also had a chance to read, to, to visit the uh, inside and it is beautiful what Andrew and his bride have done. It's, it's awesome. And the new fence is really beautiful. Um, I have some pictures I would actually like to show if possible. Um, I don't know if I can do this. Is it through chat or... You would have to share your screen somehow, and then they would have to be on your computer, I think. Okay. Um, I could share, let me see, share screen. Uh, yeah, it's doing something. There you go. Okay, so this is, this is my front porch. I'm directly next door at 12 Pine Grove. And you can see that as soon as I come out my, my front porch, I'm just sitting there reading. Uh, facing Pine Grove. And to the left is, is, uh, is uh, their property behind the trash bags and my car. And you can see the top of the hot tub there. Um, you can see a little closer version as you walk down that path to my driveway. And just, just for clarity, I just thought that would be helpful to see. So we, um, I can probably unshare my screen now. Um, I just wanted to do that to point out that I've talked to Andrew about this and, um, you know, I agree that I would love <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, the CVS to come up with a nice uh, fencing to cover those ugly garbage pails. Cause I see them as well. Maybe that's something we can do in the future, but um, I'm not sure what to, whoops. Oh yeah, there they are. Um, so it's tricky because if I go out to my front porch and just wanna have a cup of coffee or a bite to eat and turn to the left, I see the hot tub and it's just super awkward. And um, we did discuss the possibility of an extension of the beautiful fence that he built in the backyard they built um, that would run past the house all the way to the curb or close to the front yard but I don't know if that's even possible um so uh and also just as a point of interest the initially I think there were trees that they built along the road and they had to be moved back there was a bunch of pine trees and when they moved them back they pushed them all together into this really kind of crunched sort of weird they just were too close but that's where they sit right now because they couldn't sit where they were and they had already purchased them. So now they're just kind of pushed together against like right around the fencing, ten, about 10 feet in where those new tall posts are. And um, I'm not sure if, 
um, how far a fence can go and how tall it can be to create privacy for Andrew and his hot tub and also privacy for me. Um, but that would really be one of the solutions that I would be in favor of if it could go that way. Otherwise, it's really very challenging to feel comfortable um, just being on my porch, looking to the left and seeing a hot tub and not knowing what is going to happen with the use of it. Okay, thank, thank you, Robert. Um, I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you and Andrew have had a discussion about this. Um, Andrew, when um, you you located the hot tub, did you consider any kind of fencing or privacy considerations for the hot tub, even you know, for your own usage? Yeah, absolutely. And we're still planning to <clears throat> sort of whatever is within the legal limits, given that it is the front yard, to create a little more privacy around it, maybe with some plants. Ellen had um, some interesting ideas about maybe like a shower curtain, which I don't think anybody would really like to see in our yard so much, but something, yeah, absolutely. And as it is right now, we don't use it until late at night anyway. So, but I, I, I definitely take the point and um, we are. Yeah, because I, I think this, that might've been a consideration had you come before us prior to its installation, we, we may have, it, we may have looked at fencing opportunities to uh uh to to enclose it and, and w the size of those could be dependent upon what what was necessary yeah, yeah. again i mean I, I, when i just stand up and look across the street at this like crazy impenetrable forest in, in our neighbor's yard across the street I, we didn't expect to do that exactly but we just figured we could do you know something a little you know, more private than it is now. And uh, I don't know, we're still working on it. Okay. Like Jude has her hand up. I'm not sure if you can see her, but she has her hand oh, up. Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't see anything like that. That's so okay. anyone can help me out with That's that. Yeah, here. Jude? Okay, so uh, six foot fences are not allowed in front yards. That's another, another question, um, just to let you know. Four feet is what's allowed. Yeah. And then I think in talking to Andrew, he said if it wasn't able to be where it is, he would consider moving it in front of my north facing light window, yeah. um, which is just strange. And I, it, I don't even know if it could fit because the property line, I just had a survey done and, and the property line and that little alcove where it would sit on the side of his house. I'm not sure um, it could fit. It's just uh, it's very confusing and awkward. Um, would, it, would a four foot fence cover the hot tub for you? It, I don't, it would maybe cover up to the hot tub, but you'd see people <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> coming in and out and shirtless and it's a front yard. It's, it's, and the street and from the street as well. I mean, um, I think one of the concerns too is that when people are in hot tubs, they tend to talk louder because of the jets. And I believe there's an Airbnb near you that does have a hot, another hot tub, and it's there's been complaints about that because of the volume. Um, so you know, it seems to me that a privacy fence would muffle that sound and um yeah. what is the right. limit the limit is four feet Jude? yeah the, the limit for a front yard fence is is four feet but you know there there is a difference between uh, it, at least in my mind there is a difference between a six foot section of privacy fence versus a six foot fence which entirely encompasses an entire right. front yard right. you know so even though it, it would be you know, it, it, is, it would be more of a privacy fence than a fence per se. So would it be possible to have a six foot, I mean, his fence on his porch, because it's built on stilts or raised above, it's actually higher, I think. But if it could match that from the back of the house all the way along the side of my driveway, past the hot tub, that would then begin to create privacy for both of us 
that would be aesthetically pleasing because the fence is beautiful. Uh, I just don't know if legally that is possible. Well, he would probably have to apply and, and just do a whole new variance for that because then it's it's a second variance that he would need well, in order to get the six foot high fence in a front yard. And also there's a setback too for where you have to put a fence. And I don't think, I mean, unless it's right up against his house, whether it looked pretty close from where your driveway and property was and where his property was. It seems to me what Michael was saying about get having a privacy area built around the hot tub so it's not really a fence around his front yard per se but rather an extension of the hot tub um so that's something we can look into and if the variance is granted you know it would be with the condition that there you'd have to do something to first of all block it from the street because it's very visible from the street um, when okay. you that that's a good point, Marcia. And then who who was assigned to this case? Me. Okay, Marcia. So um, um, let's. Um, oh, um, I have to. Uh, is there Jude anyone had else? Jude had her hand up. Jude, yep, Jude yep. Had her hand. You know, so so I have, and this has come up before with things in front yards, and I feel like the zoning law is pretty explicit about what's allowed in the front yard and what's not. And I, you know, and I, I, I look at other communities to see is Woodstock being overly stringent in their rules. And, you know, and I walk around neighborhoods when I was working around neighborhoods in Kingston and people have front yards. They don't have fences in their front yards. They don't have garages in their front yards. They don't have swimming pools in their front yards. They don't have hot tubs in their, hot, their front yards. A front yard is a front yard that faces the street. Mm -hmm. And so, I would be curious to know what's really going on with your deck in the back, because that seems like a much more appropriate, much more private, probably would help muffle sound because you've already got some barriers there. Um, it makes a lot more sense. And you know, and, and I, I have to consider if everybody on that road started putting up, you know, privacy fences because they want something in front of their porch or they, I don't know what. What's that, what's that street gonna look like? It's no longer a neighborhood, it's some other thing going on. So I would like to explore alternatives and see if there's another way. Because it, it you know, when I, when I went by and I looked at it, it's, it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. to have that in front of somebody's house. It's my two cents. Yeah, I just wanna add, I feel the same way. It just feels really awkward. And I thought if, if I could do the same thing, other people and, um, I like taking strolls up and down and around the block and all over the neighborhood. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's become, I think because of what happened over the sequences of events from the bushes and then the posts, the added, the new fence is great. The two posts, the very low fence in the front, that's great. But the, and some of the landscaping, but the, the bushes and then these large tall posts and then like a lattice thing and then the hot tub it's becoming really um congested and it could be really beautiful i mean i'm hoping we all can kind of make our street really beautiful and i think andrew they have great taste and i i know that they can make it that way uh, i would love it if it was able to fit in the backyard on the porch um, but, um uh, okay. not, thank, you. thank you very much robert Michael, um, this is Joe. Yep. Can I, um, yeah, yeah, please. So, so um, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, I, I largely agree with what you'd said. Um, uh, and I, I understand Robert's concerns um, for sure. Um, I, I think there's a limit to what Robert is going to be able to dictate <laughs> with respect to the property. And I just, you know, I, I hear you loud and clear and I, I seems like you guys in general have a good relationship, which is great and everything, but um, it just, it seems to me that um, before we do anything, we should find out about that septic situation. And um, depending on what we hear about that, if, if there's gonna be, a fence or something else, 
that either the application should be formally amended or withdrawn and resubmitted with everything that's being suggested here. Um, you know, a hot tub with this privacy fence and w whatever else is involved. So I just wanted to say that that's, I would not be comfortable approving it with a condition without sort of having it as all part of one application that we could look at. Okay. I, th I think you could still <laughs> use that beautiful patio you put in the front and utilize that as a patio with all the, you know, trees and the growth around it and make it a really pretty living space as well. To sort of switch from the deck to the front as your living space and then the deck becomes the hot tub space. Okay, thank you, Marcia. Um, are there, is there, I can't, Oh, you mute, Michael. Michael. I don't even know how that happens. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, are there any other contiguous neighbors no. uh, that I call from the list? No. All right, then I move to close the wait, wait, public. Wait, just... wait, there's somebody else here. Yeah, she's a friend of Mr. Rabinowitz. I mean, um, she can speak. She Michael, should be on here. I'm sorry, I have to say this, but she shouldn't even be on here because I did not send her the link. And the only people who should be on this meeting are when I send the link. Oh, um, I can't bring, I can't invite a friend? No, you would have to have advised me and then I would have to have sent oh, her. Oh, okay. Because if not, okay. then everybody from the public can get on this meeting. Okay, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. No, wait, wait, Michelle. People are allowed to attend a public meeting. Not if I don't send them the link, Jude. But if we were sitting in Como, she would be able to walk into the building. Correct, but that is why that is why with the Zoom link, they they request the township requested that only people who get that link, anybody who wants to participate, needs to ask me for the link or or and the, and, um, and, and, and let me say let me say please out of respect to everybody here and a Woodstocker from many years, 68 years. Um, I'm here just respectfully to support a friend, just to listen. As you notice, I haven't talked. I'm not giving input, but I did see also public meeting. So that said to me that I'm allowed to be present. Right, but it, the, that it's not in the newspaper is what I say. It's via Zoom and then we have to send out the link. That's, that's the only thing. Okay. Obviously you didn't know, Mr. R I mean, nobody knew about that, but that's how moving forward, that's how the meetings have to be held. Uh -oh. Michelle, Michelle, yeah. can, can I, can I stop it, Michelle? Yes. So then we no longer have public hearings? It's a public hearing, but that's why I send out to all the contiguous neighbors who are the ones who can come in. They have to contact me if they want the Zoom link. But we can't uh, be sending um, out the um, Zoom link to. But that doesn't that. make it a public meeting. I didn't Jane, know that. Jane, I, have I, I have you covered, Jane. Hold on for a second, please. Thank you. So uh, I I would go to, I would go so far as to say that as a public meeting, the Zoom link should be on the agenda and open to the public. But I guess that's just my only my opinion. I, I will I, double check with Bill tomorrow about how other other boards have been handling this, because that was my instruction as of last year. So that's why. Yeah, uh, un uh, un understood. Let's let's put that on uh, as an item to take a look at because I, I Perfect. yeah, I think it for my purposes, I, I would think it would still be a public meeting via Zoom. So I agree. OK, I'll look. I'll talk to Bill tomorrow and I'll let you guys know. Yeah, that yeah, that'll be great. It even seems like it should be in the public notice that you publish in the paper. I, I agree with you, Jude. Yeah. I mean, because they, they I, I know when they originally had met, done the Zoom meetings, they were concerned about someone hacking the meeting. But Correct. I, I really don't think the CCP is interested in our zoning meeting. <laughs> Can I just ask one other question? Is it possible that um, moving forward, if there's a, a new ver a new meeting that the owner provides like drawings or or a commitment to a certain design or with specifications, if it's going to be approved, because it's tricky to know if someone's approved to do something, I don't know how you, how you um, have a handle on what it actually ends up being built or look like, or if that matters to the committee or the, yeah, I'm not sure. 
This is the first time I'm doing one of these. <laughs> oh, uh, for for a pre-existing situation. Well, in this yeah. case, yeah, just yes, like he's right. going to build a fence on from the side of his house or from the street. I mean, from the side, of, I, I just don't know if if they need to provide some visuals and specifications or not. Because it's one thing to say you're going to do something that's completely different if you get approval and you do anything you want. Um, from the last uh, site visit I did with Gordon, where the owner, the variance was granted with a condition to put screening up in the form of plants. Gordon said that we can't dictate what they put up. It's just that a term screening. So. All right. But, so, but if we're talking about a, a fence, they're, they are allowed to put a four foot fence by right. If they were to put a six foot fence, they would need a variance. Correct. Just to answer, if that answers your question, they can do plantings wherever they want. Right, and you can't really dictate the kind of fence they put, if they want to paint it purple or. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I just didn't know what what the uh, I didn't know what. So so can we can we let since Jane is here and sat through all of this can we let her speak if she has anything else to say. Michael. Yeah, sure. I Jane, thanks for joining the meeting. And uh, I don't you you can say something. You don't have to say something. Your support of Andrew is noted. Yeah, and, and also I was just very curious about, you know, how, um, I live in Woodstock. I'm curious about how this, you know, works. And Sled Hill is in my soul. I grew up at Sled Hill. And so I, I care about Sled Hill. And I drive by the house all the time. I almost bought it, Andrew. And, uh, and also, you've done a great job inside. I couldn't have vision, visioned that, so... Okay, thanks. Thank thanks you for joining for us. Join, yeah, thanks for joining us, Jane. And there are plenty of volunteer opportunities within the town of Woodstock. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So then with that, I make a motion to close the public hearing on ZBA case. 2122. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Andrew, thank you for coming in, putting together a well, uh, very well written uh, discussion about how you ended up in the situation that you were. And thank you, Robert and Jane, for coming in to provide your input. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. If you like, you're welcome to stay. And if you also, you're, you're welcome to go on about your day. We have some other business that uh, we'll need to take care of. Do we know what the next steps are? Is that clear? Well, the next step uh, would be that this is uh, Marsha's case, and we would uh, task Marsha to come together and put together a decision for it. And once she has an idea of where she's going on that, she can bring it back to us. We can have discussion about it and, and move it forward that way. And the board has 62 days to make a decision. Oh, I thought the first thing was to see if it could be in the backyard above the septic tank. But maybe that wasn't. No, that's one of the things we'll look into to see if that's an option. In okay. order to write up the decision. You okay. know, and also take into consideration any correspondence we may have gotten from other neighbors. Okay. Um, and hopefully, you know, we we'll, can find a solution that makes everybody happy. You know, okay. come up with a good one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Michael, do you want to recess the case? Yes, I would like to uh, recess uh, ZBA case, Michelle. 2122. 2122. All right, thank, thank you, you, Andrew, Jane, and Robert. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm moving forward to find the agenda. Okay. Uh, we have... Uh, Two decisions and orders outstanding. One is Ralph uh, Gano and Mill Hill Road. Um, who has the uh, Ralph Gano case? Oh, I think Gordon. I was initially assigned that he no. is deceased, <laughs> and we are waiting oh, for the estate to be set up. So it stayed right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will there will be no action taken on that. And then we have ZBA case twenty one twenty, the Mill Hill Road uh, uh, um, 
case. And, and was that your case, Jude? Yes. Yep. Do you have any questions to us as a board about that case? Or are there any updates? Or would you like to, uh, to talk to us about it at the next meeting? Next meeting. OK, great. Um, and now we have uh, the cases scheduled for October 14th. There's three cases scheduled for that. Um, I will let uh, Gordon assign those cases when he returns uh, for that meeting. Uh, are there any other questions for tonight's meeting or any other discussion on what we've gone through so far? No. Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, so, great. Michelle, can you let me know if you find out any more <laughs> info about the seven? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow morning, that's the first thing I'll do. I'll find that out and I'll just, uh, talk to Bill about the public hearing part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. With that, I'd like to make a motion to close uh, ZBA case on uh, uh, ZBA. <laughs> adjourn the meeting, Michael. All right. Close I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Wait Thanks a minute. Everyone for calling in I'm on voting this. on closing the ZBA. Wait. Yeah. We're, the ZBA <laughs> is closed. <laughs> we need to put up. We need to put up a sign. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Be safe. <laughs> Thank you. We can only meet from our cars from now on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. All in the parking lot of Kamal. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.